So I'm going to stick one extra topic on the end of this lesson. It's not really directly related to lists or loops, but we have now seen a number of examples where um, the way we carry out a certain action is by attaching a method to the end of an object. And one of the things that um, confused me when I first started programming in Python was that I would see situations where there would be a whole string of methods um, stuck onto the end of something else. And so, um, as we talked about earlier, if you want, you can take a function and you can nest it inside of another function. In a similar manner, you can take a method and add it on to the end of another method. So what will happen is that each one of the um, steps here will be executed one at a time, and then whatever the um, output is of a particular method, that will become the input of the next method. So for example, I create a date object, I set its value equal to, to today, and then I have that today date object um, being represented by the day, a string for the day of the week. So it goes through and does each of those three things as once. So one of the important things, if you're gonna do this thing of stringing um, methods together, the type that is the return value of the first method has to be the correct type for whatever is supposed to go, uh, uh, whatever the next method is supposed to operate on. So let's go ahead and uh, see some examples of this. So um, <clears throat> here I've created an object. This is object is a string, and it was a dark and stormy night, and I got sick. Um, so what we're going to do is perform a number of methods on this string one at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is apply the lower method. This is a method that is appropriate for strings. It turns the uh, string into all lowercase, and the output type is also a string. So we're going to generate a string and we're going to assign it to low and call it lower sentence because it's lowercase. Then we're going to take our lowercase sentence and use the split method on it. The split method is going to break it apart at every space and it's going to create a list that consists of all the words that it has separated. So that's why I call this word list because it's actually a list, not a string. Then there's another function called count, which we haven't talked about before. This is a function that you can use on a list. And what it'll do is count how many occurrences there are of a particular item on the list. So for example, if I want to know how many times and occurs on the list, then I can, use, I can have it count the number of ands. So it operates on a list, but the output uh, of this is an integer number, not a uh, list. So let's go ahead and run this. The first thing that we have to do is to <clears throat> load the value of this string into the variable my sentence. And now if we run the script, we will see that the first thing it does is turn this into all lowercase. So the a on the first and is turned to lowercase. Then it gets turned into a list, so it's broken into all the words, and then it counts the number of ands that are present, one, two, and three, so it returns a value of three. Now, if I wanted to, I could just have it do all three of these methods, one right after another. So I can take my sentence, apply the lower method to that, and produce another string, then apply the split method to that string and generate a list, then apply the count method to that list and generate a number. I can just do them all at once. If I run that, I see that the answer is three. So I got the same answer as before, 
but I was able to leave out all of the intermediate steps. So one question is, is this a good idea or not? Well, one thing that you see is that stringing a bunch of methods together does make for very compact code, but it also makes the code much less readable. So if you see a very long list of methods, one after the other, a lot of times it's difficult to know exactly what is going on. It's a similar problem that you have if you nest a whole bunch of functions inside of each other. You have to basically pick through and go from the inside out and say, okay, well, first we're doing the input function, then we're taking the integer of that, and then we're taking the square root of that. It's not as obvious if you're trying to read down through code and understand what's going on. But there are certain situations, like for example, um, this where we just simply have some methods that generate the thing that we want. So we don't have to necessarily pick through and think about what's going on here. We could just put a comment and say, this is gonna generate today's day of the week. And then we don't actually have to think about how it does that because we're just simply generating that value.